This is a series on learning the Meisler Fabric AI tool on Linux, specifically Ubuntu 24.04. It's not the newest version of Ubuntu desktop, but uh, 24.04 is something that most people are likely to have that are on Ubuntu already or are transitioning from Windows either exclusively or dual booting as they get used to things and so the mfab the the Meisler fabric ai tool it's 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 a pretty powerful ai interfacing tool and by that i mean it's a tool for interfacing with llms or the buzzword ai interfacing with ai what that specifically means is in this case uh large language models and so one of the reasons for this series is the problem inherent in not just newcomers, although for the most part newcomers, but people that are familiar with the terminal and they still kind of get confused, like myself, they still kind of get confused looking at a GitHub repo and knowing what they can get out of it. And so the, the Fabric GitHub repo has a lot in it that, to, to give you, and it's, it might not be readily apparent, if you're not very comfortable in GitHub space. And so one of the things that you'll learn by using something like the uh, Meisler fabric is understanding how to interface with LLMs. And that can be overwhelming for people. You know, the, the chat bots, the chat interface for in, you know dealing with LLMs and AI, it's not the only way to interface with these things. In fact, it, it might not even be the best way. You know, if we just jump into a couple things here, we're going to be dealing with getting Fabric installed. And there's a couple ways to do it. So the GitHub repo is a place you're going to want to be familiar with, which is just github.com slash Daniel Meisler slash Fabric. There's a couple different ways to install. Navigate down the, the what I call the basic or the simple install is installing the binaries pertinent to each system. And, you know, for Ubuntu, it would be this one here. If you have a different system, you know, the, you'd have to copy the bash script, the bash install script for whichever one applies. So, and we'll have a video that gets into that. The other thing that we want to cover in the series is using the prompts, you know, not just in the fabric tool. If you're not, if you just have no use for the terminal, if nothing else, you can take away from this whole project right at the top of the GitHub repo, you would click on patterns. And, you know, we'll be installing the patterns on the system so that they're much more accessible or more easily accessible. But these patterns, just getting in and using these, for instance, you know, if, if I open up ChatGPT and I want to use one of these, let's say I want to use, we'll use the summarize pattern. And so we go into the directory called summarize. That's the name of the pattern. And all of the patterns are in the system.md file. So we'll go in here. We'll just copy this. Going to chat GPT. Now we can put it in the system prompt. There, there are ways to do that. You know, you could go to settings. You could put it in here in the customized chat GPT. This will send things, in, I believe, into the system prompt. But just using the patterns, if we paste this in, copy this, paste it into chat GPT. So now that pattern is inserted at the top of our input window. And if we went, let's just get some content from somewhere, right? Like, so we're on one of Daniel Meisler's pages at danielmeisler.com. And let's just copy some of this text. And if we would just want a summary on that text, we can paste it in here. So now it has the article or contents of that page as the input. And before that, which would normally be the system prompt, if you're using the fabric tool, or if you went in through some settings, you could insert this. But the, this will accomplish the same thing for demonstration purposes. You can see this first part is on up is the pattern. And from input on down, the, that's the text content from the website that we copied it off of. And so we get our typical summary output based on the instructions in the pattern. So if you, if you do nothing else, you should be taking away from this whole project using these crowdsourced patterns. If you do nothing else, start using these to use AI and even ChatGPT differently. Moving on, using the, the CLI tool is one of the next things that, that we should cover. Real quick, just as a simple demonstration, use just a, a quick series of these. So here, this construction of the fabric prompt, of the fabric command, we're just sending an inline message 
and this doesn't really have to be in quotes as long as you adhere to some of the format guidelines which you'll learn through the usage the the nuances to that it's often easier for us you know the people to read if you just put the inline message or query in quotes and then we have just the basics the s flag for streaming the p flag stacked that's for calling up a pattern and then immediately after that we would call one of the patterns in this case we're calling raw query and you can see it's just doing a, a quick explanation based on what's inside of the raw query pattern which you know we'll explore that so this is what it looks like this is a different way to interface with these llms and i'm willing to bet that after making it through this series start to think that it's a better way than the strict confines of any given chat interface and how its developers designed it without having the knowledge yourself of you know extensibility which gets into coding and programming most often you know the the next thing we'll take a look at in the series is just going through all the flags if we pull them up all of these flags they all have very useful purposes and so we will get through all of them i have them in in my own organization which you might or might not agree with i've kind of i've div divided these into a sort of beginner or entry level then an intermediate and then an advanced level uh, of usage that's not just going straight down the list you'll see it a as it comes you know just to demonstrate a, a couple things real quick we could use for instance, like the context, I have some context files at the ready in that directory, and you'll you'll understand what all of that means as the series goes on. But these are uh, like the mfab readme. That's just the readme in the fabric repo. Right? The mfab readme is just the full readme. And then I broke it up into its roughly main nine sections, each section individually in its, in its own file, all within the context directory. So we can take a look at how these things work. So we'll just do a summarize pattern on the section one of the MFAB readme. We can take a look at the dry run and what it would send if we take the dry run off. This is what it would be sending to the LLM. The same thing goes with sessions. We can list the sessions with a the dash capital X flag. And we have a demo session and a hyperparameter session. If we were to activate one of those sessions, it would look like something like this. So we, we could run summarize on that, or it could have done a dry run like I did with context. You know, if you wanted to see that, that was the whole purpose, is to see what it sends in the dry run, which the, as a context grows, sorry, as a session grows, this will get longer and longer as the session goes on, as it records every interaction into the sessions file. And we'll go over how those things work. We'll also be, we'll be taking a look at some Linux tools that will help navigate around your file system and fully utilize the fabric tool and use the fabric tool on contents within your file system we'll be looking at broot which allows you to very quickly find anything in your system and just generally browse around figure out what what's going on and where you know if we go into the config.config .config directory we can go down and find other directories we go into the fabric directory where we have context uh, extensions which will flesh out uh, logs which is based on I believe the streamlit UI which I'll show you that here in a second the patterns you know 188 unlisted because they're trying to fit everything in one page that's how this B root tool works you know another tool we're gonna be using a lot is Ranger this allows you to really snap around your your file system there's an alternative, a uh, new Rust written alternative called Yazi Ranger, I think is in Python. We'll be taking a look at the config file of Fabric, which you can see down here, there is no short flag. There's only the long form. We would be, and, and so I have a, a YAML file that I, I just had preset. So if we go take a look at that. So under the presets, I have some configuration files for Fabric. And by configuration, that is not to configure the code or, or anything of the tool. It's a configuration file for a Fabric command or a fully fleshed out command inside your terminal session. It takes 
parameters like the model and you fill it in in this yaml format and then you can call up the this yaml config the name of it which is just ew short for extract wisdom because it's the pattern i have assigned in this config file it sets the model the context length the hyper parameters selects the pattern streaming is true i don't need raw on because i want to use the pattern and so the, this is a pattern i can use and to use it i would type in and then I would probably using extract wisdom, I would want to send a body of text to it. And PB paste needs to be piped. It can't be file redirected without some other stuff going on in the in the command. And so we're running extract wisdom on all of this text over here from Daniel Meisler's site. And so that's how a config would work. And we can make that easier with aliases. You know, if we did the, the PB paste, and if we had all of this, the fabric dash dash config, and then the location of the config, let's say that we had that alias to F for fabric and EW for extract wisdom, we could shorten our command down to PB paste pipe few. F E W and the same thing if we had that alias set up that that would these are the things that you can do to really you know PB paste pipe few and then you copy a ton of stuff you don't need to cut paste it into anything you just have it copy your clipboard and the PB paste tool will gather that from the clipboard and pipe it to your fabric command which can be shortened down to just a, a few keystrokes so you can start to see how this really takes off with with efficiency things like that we'll be getting into the extensions and what those what those do how to set up an extension you know how to build one then how to register it how to remove them there's also plugins that are kind of they, they have the same template really as the extensions and they kind of they take a, some go coding so I'll, I'll show you those but it, it's up to you if you're into and you have that skill set then absolutely if it's something you want to do, but the extensions are a much easier way to gain the, sort, the same sort of uh, extensible functionality that you can add on your own. You know, we'll get into all of these things. And then naturally, as I'm sure, you know, a lot of you that I, that I talk to on a, on a weekly basis, you're interested in, in asking about the GUIs and how to even find those or set them up. And we'll, we'll get on the, into those things too. You know, for instance, where I have, and we'll do all this from scratch, where I had the fabric repo already cloned down to the system, and I moved to, there was a streamlit.py file right here. This used to be in the directory one back. And so I just moved it into a, a pattern studio, because that's what it's called when you open it, to show you what this looks like. We'll get into the pattern studio and hook it up, look at the navigation views, you know, running the patterns where it has all of the patterns here pattern management this is a place to create new patterns of your own to edit existing or delete any the analysis dashboard is after you've run a few things and this has some history to it you can analyze and compare different models responses things like that, that that's kind of what that whole thing does and that's what it looks like and if you wanted to take a look at the web ui we can spin that up for a quick look so taking a look at the web UI, this is a pretty well done project. There's Network Chuck. There's a lot of things you can build out. They have a lot of templates for you to start a lot of different sorts of projects. I believe you can launch this as your website and use it as a, a blogging site. Uh, anything that, that you can really think of and, and they can get you started with a lot of these templates here. And then there's also a UI for you know, like a chat interface, but a little bit better done than your standard chat. And you would import if you fire up a fabric server in another window and in, in another terminal session, then I believe this connects to it. And you really start to get a this is a good visual one to a good UI to use here, a graphical user interface. Whether you're here to get started from scratch or if you're looking for a, a specific place to jump in, if you're looking for a specific piece to the puzzle, you should be able to find what you need as I break the videos apart into small chunks of single tasks or showing a single feature or a single set of flags. You should be able to jump to what you need if you're if you're not looking to to learn from scratch, you know, how to get into the Linux file system and use this tool in that environment. So you can watch the playlist in order if if you're a from scratch type of person in this scenario or jump to what you need.